So today we're going to take a look at the modern release versus the old release. What is the difference? What are the players doing now that they weren't doing 20 years ago? Is there a bit of myth busting involved to be able to talk about how we control the shape of the shots? Let's have a look in detail on these areas and what it is that the best players are doing in the world and how that can be employed into your game to allow you to shoot lower scores. If you're new to the channel guys, welcome. What we're aiming to do on this channel is to create golf content to help you reduce your scores and improve your enjoyment of the game. Simple. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe. Hit the bell icon, that way you don't miss any of the notifications. You get all the latest content coming your way. And if you do enjoy the videos, please give it a thumbs up. On to today's content, we are taking a look at a subject quite close to my heart back in the day from many times with my teaching, learned a lot from the subject we're going to talk about, and that is talking modern release of the golf club versus old school. What does this actually mean? So right, let's make it simple first of all. What is old school? Old school was stuff we saw back in the day. We saw when I was a junior, Ernie L's definitely did it. Justin Rose came up doing it and I remember being taught and my dad often used to go on about it and he would say if you want to do the magic bit son is how you release that golf club at the bottom. So how it's releasing like this would create that draw pattern. So how you release the club was what created it. So we saw a lot of players had very good hands. He got taught that if you had great hands, you're a great player. That was one of the things that was often talked about. And people said, this is why that guy's such a phenomenal player. He's got great feel in the hands. Now what we see is we see players and they don't, you're not talking about people having great hands today. We look at your Brooks Koepkas, you look at your DJs, Colin Marikawa and even Justin Rose now, different to what he did back in the day. We're talking about athletes. Okay, now that's not meant to say that all you guys need to be going down the gym, but with, you don't talk about great hands in players, and that's because we're learning that the body is controlling what the club is doing, and the club is following the role of the body, so the club is rotating around more, and it's allowing physics, along with your body rotation, to square the club. So let's have a look at the pros and cons of both movements, and what they will help you do. And is there a preference over one or the other and why are tour players moving in one direction and we don't necessarily hear the classic version of good hands anymore? First of all, equipment's completely changed, hasn't it? We saw wooden drivers, small headed metals, golf balls that moved a lot in the air and created loads and loads and loads of spin. Now, that combination made it really difficult to control the golf ball. So players played with a bit more shape. And if they were going to have a bit more shape, they used their hands to help control the shape. Because back then, you know, I, when I did my PGA exams, the ball flight yours were the exact opposite to what they are taught today. It was, it was said at that the face bent the ball. So the face angle curved it for you and your path sent the ball. Well, we know that's completely wrong. It's exact opposite. But this is what the PGA of Great Britain and Ireland and of America and the entire world were taught. So if you think, if you had to bend the ball with the face, you either had to shut it or hold it. So you had to have great hands to do this because that's how you controlled the face. Now we know it's the opposite. So players aren't doing this. They're using geometry. But players were successful with it. But we have a look at it. We look at not the top end of the game on the tour, but we look at the sort of higher end and elite level at your own club, and then moving into elite level amateur golf, we see more top players than we've ever seen. Okay? We're relying on the body movement, and generally on a day-to-day -day basis, the body doesn't change that much. So because of that, it's actually meaning that we've got more players in category one, more players at scratch, more players at plus one than we've ever seen. The ball obviously moves less in the air, which is helping, but that's a big factor for it. Now, when we're having a look at the hands, we look at it, we can create loads of speed with the hands, okay? So loads and loads of speed with the flipping, of the wrists here. I mean, these guys back in the day hit it a long way. They didn't hit it as far as they do now because they weren't athletes in the gym to support the motion, but they had a long way with flash speed. Now, flash speed can still work. I've seen loads of players who have still hit it a long way, but use their hands. The problem is it brings in a two-way miss because what we have is 
it doesn't have to be out by much where they haven't closed enough the wrists and the faces to the right or it's flipped too much here and the ball starts and hooks off to the left so it's really difficult to create that perfect synergy of timing between the wrists and the body and getting that club on the ball for that you know bear in mind it's you know four ten thousandths of a second the ball's on the face to control that where that point's club's pointing and it starts left or right moves off in both directions gives us a load of problems so when we're looking at the more modern release what we're looking at is rather than seeing the club coming through or if i just go down the bottom of the handle where the handle's now pointing at you and very quickly it points back away from the target so the hands are very active through this hitting area what we're now seeing is that the club moves around so the the handle is getting more in line just post impact with that left hip so once it goes around in this direction everything is squaring up with that body rotation and the handle ends up much more in line what we've then got is we go a little bit physics just from a moment right we're looking at is the inner turning of the body so we're looking at three circles a circle your body's turning in circle with the hands circle with the club head in its most simplistic form i know that they're different and it could but it's just to give you that overall picture of it so what we've got is once that body is rotating here and okay, once the shoulder starts to open the left arm is pulled into the body so as this is happening this then has the effect of pulling the club around so the left arm rotates in this direction so it's supinating as that shoulder opens which therefore squares that club up at the bottom and from there we just keep turning and it's if you can just keep rotating that body the club's always going to be squaring itself and therefore all we have to do is control the path Make sure it's not too far into out or too far out to in and we should be able to get a pretty stable ball flight and one that we don't see a lot of movement on so the top players that we're seeing the exit left is basically that the club head as soon as it hit the ball here is going more around to the left rather than swinging more out to the right and with the hands in this direction so this was sort of an image we saw back a few years ago or quite a long time ago now and this is the one that we see all of the tall players with now okay you know this is the key so how can you apply this really really simply what you need to make sure you're doing is start off half swings because you need to learn how the impact feels and at full speed you won't get it not straight away you won't and the key is what we need to do is once we've got this club into a halfway down position here you get the feeling the right elbow here into the right side of the body with the right shoulder and the hip that there, as the left side of the body is opening that they all come through the shot together this means that the club face stays really square for a long period of time what you traditionally do is if it's coming in here the body would stop as the hands take over whereas we want the body to unwind around as the left side works up the right shoulder will go down and under so to give you an idea on this how this would feel it would be a very short little half swing to begin with where all you're trying to do is make sure that the body is unwinding on the way through. So you can see there that the club worked around with the body rotation, the chest is in position, hit the ball slightly from the inside, a tiny little draw, but the club face is really, really stable. One thing to look for is at the end of your follow through, the club head still wants to be outside that hands here. If it's flipped over past it there, chances are your arms or your wrists are working faster than your body. So a great way to learn how stable that would be is to still have a bit of angle in that right wrist in this direction here and that club is working around with you. Once you've done that and you start to get a feeling for it, you basically then want to progress on to hitting full shots and trying to get the same feeling. So for me, I really would then employ you that you try and feel that the club is working much more around to the left with the body and you will just make sure that the right hand maintains its angle for a longer period of time and basically unwind hard with the body don't let the body stop if you start to miss it left either the body has stopped or the hands have closed the face so the first thing to do is make sure the body's turning if the body isn't stopping then you know you need to hold the angle in the right wrist for longer if you are missing it right you will just be holding the face dead square but not turning the body so you need to get more weight into the heel so you then can figure out how your pivot in your arms and the wrist work with one another let's give it a little go and see what starts to happen here so it's getting a feeling of 
really unwinding around that left side and really getting a completed golf swing. So for me there, I've just really rotated into that heel. That's gone nice and straight towards the flag. Really good flight. And I got the rehearsal on the little half shot and then I totally just went for it. Turned as hard as I could on the way through, making sure I got the weight into the left heel. I unwound around that left side and then make it, everything is happening then is that you are going to let your body do the work. Now, I've heard comments recently that you're, this is gonna hurt your back. Genuinely, guys, it's not. If you aren't turning, you're going to hurt your back. If you don't turn back this way, you're not loading your pelvis and your back isn't rotating properly, you're going to put stress on the lower spine because if the pelvis isn't loading, you're going to put the torque through the spine joints. That isn't going to be good for you. So don't let you think that loading your pelvis and using it properly is making your bad back. It's the exact opposite. If you aren't doing it, it's hurting your game in more sense than one. So have a look at this. This is the key. We've got to make sure that we've loaded it back, unwound through, and then that club is simply following the laws of geometry and physics to square itself up, giving us a straight ball flight. Now, this isn't me beating on hands, saying they're no good. They've worked for loads of players over the years who've been phenomenal. But if we look at what people are doing on tour now, the modern way is definitely big muscles, moving the outside, hands still play a part. Yes, they're moving, but they are reacting. The club isn't just being held onto, there is a release, but it's all via the body and they react to the body. They don't control the motion with the hands because as we're seeing, it can lead to a bit of directional issues and it's not what we're seeing the current best players in the world doing. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, guys. If, it, if you have, please give it a thumbs up. Comment below, is there something else you've seen players in the past doing or players that are doing now? You want to know why is it they're doing it and how can I learn to do this in my game? As always, thanks for watching and talk with you again soon.